When we journey into the world of pre-built PCs, some names come to mind such as iBuyPower, CyberPower PC, ABS, SkyTech, Alienware, HP, Lenovo, Origin, and a whole lot more. Now, one of these companies reached out to us to have us test one of their pre-built PCs. Now, who was it? And better yet, how did it fare? You're on the edge of your seat right now, right? Am I right? Well, enough teasing. Let's find out right now. With the over 200 PCs that I've built this year, I like the idea of doing some testing on a pre-built PC. But, well, why, Roby? Why would we look at a pre-built? Well, believe it or not, not everyone wants to build their own PC. Stop, stop throwing things at me. Hey, hey. Put that virtual rock down, you could hurt somebody with that. Now in today's marketplace with GPUs and even certain components, <coughs> <coughs> DDR5 being hard to come by, well, let's just say a pre-built is still a solid option to get a PC. Now, iBuyPower sent us over this Slate Heiko MR. On paper, it came with some pretty impressive specs for a solid 1440p gaming machine. So let's break it down, shall we? Now, before we dive in, let's talk about the unboxing process as pre-built PCs have had some sketch experiences when handled by your local delivery company. You've got the packing and boxing up process, potential Instapack inside the machine, and then there's the UPS or FedEx or any other delivery service. And let's be honest, this could be the real wrench in getting a PC to you intact. Looking around the PC and tech community, we've seen others do reviews on pre-built PCs like Linus and Steve from Gamers Nexus and have had some pretty bad experiences with their PCs showing up in various states of disrepair. Broken cases, broken GPUs, you name it. Now let's hope we don't have that same issue with this PC. Now we took the system out of the box, we found no visible issues on the case as it was packed pretty well. Now the system did come without the GPU installed, but they did give us clear instructions and easy directions on how to install it. It's easy enough to understand if you're buying this PC without any prior experience building a PC. It's like putting toast in a toaster, except for it never pops out, it just, toasts forever. Well, on the back of the I.O. panel and GPU, there are very clear coverings and markings to show you where you can plug in HDMI cables in for your display. I know many of us, it seems like second nature setting up a PC, but you would be surprised how many folks are intimidated by the process. So I really do appreciate the handholding. Now, looking at the case, the first thing you notice is a sleek looking front but it is a solid front panel, except for like a hole in the middle of it. Now we're not sure if iBuyPower is thinking this is enough for airflow, but that's all you're gonna get in the front panel. Now for the front panel, you get a power button, two USB 3.0 type A ports, and a separate audio jack for both mic and headset. Good call here, except no USB-C. Hey, iBuyPower, guess what? The motherboard you did put in here does have a USB-C front panel header on it, so... Just saying. All right, now that we have our system unboxed and the GPU installed and turned on, let's take a look at the specs of the system they sent us. The CPU they sent us was one of the better CPUs you could buy today, and that was a Core i7-11700K. The motherboard, well, that's a different story. They did send us a Z590, but it's one of those lower end Z590s, as in the Azeroc Z590C slash AC. The board does not have an integrated IO shield, and to be honest, it's kind of ugly, which I understand is subjective, and it doesn't look very thermal friendly but looks and what it actually does is different, so we'll come back to this in a little bit. The RAM that system came with is made from Team Group, and it's their T-Force 16 gig, two by eight gig configuration at 3600 megahertz RAM, which to our surprise, XMP was actually set out of the box, which is a nice touch as it's already running at the full rated speed. Bonus, and great job for them because many beginning users, which we've kind of hit on before, can find it super intimidating going into the BIOS just to change the setting. Now the GPU that came with this is the Asus Tough Gaming RTX 3060 Ti. It's a solid GPU and a well-known brand. The 3060 Ti is a great 1440p GPU and sure to get you the frames you need to play your games. Don't worry, we'll show you all about that near the end. Now for cooling, the system came with a 240 millimeter AIO that is top mounted on the case with three 120 millimeter ARGB fans at the front as set to intake and a single 120 ARGB fan in the rear for exhaust. Again, we're just going over the specs of the machine and we will get into the thermals and how it performs in a bit. Now for storage, we have what looks to be a WD Blue SN 550 one terabyte NVMe SSD. It's a solid choice here. <laughs> See what I did there? You also get the option to put another NVMe SSD in the motherboard, which is nice should you wanna upgrade your storage at some point. Now the system came pre-installed with Windows 11, the 21H2 build, which is great to see and not a lot of updates you need out of the gate, especially going from Windows 10 to Windows 11. It means you are going to be up and gaming faster. And there you have it. All the specs for the iBuyPower Slate Echo MR system that we have right here. Now let's see 
how it actually performs. First thing we're going to talk about is thermals, as we have some questions on it. The front panel of the case has a tiny hole in the middle for airflow, and that rest seems to be pretty closed off. So we aren't expecting stellar results here. At idle, meaning the power on the PC is just on and the PC is just sitting there, in an open case environment, which means we strip everything that we can off, the CPU temp was averaging around 30 degrees Celsius. And it went up to 33 when we basically put everything back together, which is no surprise, obviously, as this does restrict airflow and we have airflow working the way the case intended. Now our GPU is a little bit different though, but not by much. Open case averaged around 29 and closed case was at 31. A two degree difference in temperature, there isn't anything to worry about. And if we did it again, right here, right now, those numbers might be two to three degrees different than that. So I think the point is, is beware of your surroundings, the airflow in the room where the PC is sitting and even what season it is. And what I mean by that is, is if you have your PC, let's say for instance, in the basement during the winter in a city like Detroit, there are two things you would potentially see. Number one, someone trying to break in and take it because you're in Detroit. And number two, it's colder in the basement and in the winter, so the ambient temperature in the room will be colder than it would be in the summer. Point is, we test ours, we have a standard setting for our ambient, etc. so that's where we get our numbers. Now, when we put the CPU under stress using ADA64 for half an hour at 100% CPU usage, I might say we saw some surprisingly good thermals in the case. The open case scenario, we saw an average of 63 degrees Celsius during the test, and the closed case scenario, the CPU only jumped up to 70. Now, that is really impressive for a pre-built system with a mostly closed off front panel and leads us to say we were actually impressed. The AIO is doing a solid job of cooling and also it's getting the air it needs to, which is all you can really ask for, isn't it? For our GPU, we ran the Unigen benchmarks for Heaven, Superposition, and Valley. And under our load with our open case, the GPU average was 56 degrees Celsius. Yes, I said 56 and only 59 in the closed case scenario. So, so far, I gotta hand it to iBuy Power on the systems. The thermals have been outstanding for us in both open case and closed case scenarios. Unlike that MSI Aegis desktop in which our GPU temps were at 73 in the open case and 81 in the closed case, and our CPU temps hit 100 degrees Celsius before the system actually throttled. Okay, thermals schmermals, Roby. If that sounds right, yeah, yeah. Give me gaming. Well, all right, let's jump in. First, let's talk about games we tested and how we tested them. Let's run down the single player's games list first, and then we'll jump into multiplayer games. So first on the list, it was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is a popular benchmark, as it has a benchmark built in with a lot of useful information, which makes it much easier to compare results. We ran this benchmark with RTX DLSS on at the highest preset, and 1440p for three runs, and it came to an average of 172 frames per second with our 3060 Ti in the system. Next up is Metro Exodus running at 1440p with the benchmark set to extreme, ray tracing set to high, and DLSS set to balance, we saw an average frame rate of 64 FPS. Dirt 5 at 1440p with ultra high graphic settings, we saw an average of 86 FPS, and if you haven't played Dirt 5 yet, you actually are missing out. You actually really should get this game, especially given it's on Xbox Game Pass or PC Game Pass, so if you have those, go give it a shot. Last single player game we tested was Borderlands 3 with maximum graphic settings at 1440p. We got an average of 66 frames per second. Again, given the single player nature, this could be more than fine, but if you wanna get higher frames per second, you may wanna lower some of those settings. As you can see, all of our single player games were above the coveted 60 FPS, and some just blew it out of the water like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, while single player games are great for passing the time during your casual gaming sessions, it's time to talk multiplayer games. Here are the games we tested, and all the games were at 1440p with the lowest visual settings to optimize for the highest possible frame rates. First up, Apex Legends, during our three runs, saw an average of 216 FPS. Next up is Battlefield 2042. We saw 129 frames per second for our three runs. What's more there to say? then I'm not really a fan of the game, but it's popular, so we wanted to make sure that we had it in here and tested it, given those figures. Next up, let's talk about Call of Duty Warzone. We ran the game an average of three times and got 171 frames per second. Now, this game is not very optimized for any system you throw at it, so it is possible that if you have a 3060 Ti, you could get higher or lower frames in this. Heck, with any game that we test, that is always a possibility. Finally, everyone's favorite mosh pit of a mosh pit in gaming, Fortnite. For all you sweaty Fortnite players that are out there named Silver Sleek or Fatal Storm, you'll be happy to know that you're gonna get a whopping 346 frames per second on Fortnite with our settings. Again, Fortnite will run on a Chromebook. Okay, not very well, but it feels that way. So it's no surprise that we got that high. But dang, 346 frames per second is still actually pretty impressive on a 3060 Ti, given that we only saw 494 frames per second on a 3080 Ti. Well, anyway, guys, there you have it. 
the iBuy Power Slate Heiko MR. We talked about thermals, and they were really great thermals, I might add. We talked about single player games and their frames per second. We talked about multiplayer games and their frames per second. Now the question is, do we recommend the PC? Now, before we answer that, I'm going to answer the question I get all the time. Do we recommend pre-built systems in general? The answer is yes. We absolutely recommend pre-built systems with a couple stipulations. Those stipulations are number one, buy your brand from like a known brand like iBuyPower. Buy it from a reputable company like Newegg or Best Buy or the actual company themselves like Origin, etc. Now make sure your specs match up with what it would cost to build the system and then add $100 to $300 depending on the parts. If the system you can build yourself is $2,000 and the pre-built of the same parts is $4,000, then no, it's probably a bad deal. Math is actually important here, folks. In fact, let's individually price out this PC to see where it would end up if we built it ourselves. So let's look at the CPU and Intel Core i7-11700K. It sells for $350 over on Newegg. For the motherboard, it's an ASRock Z590C. It's so cheap that really no one kind of sells this, but we did find one used on Amazon for $300, so we're just gonna call this $150 new, given somebody's just having a go, I guess. For the RAM, we're gonna use the Team T-Force T-Group $3600 kit that sells for $36 over at Newegg. For storage, we're looking at the SN550 one terabyte NVMe SSD, and that sells for about hundred bucks on both Amazon and Newegg. The GPU is the Asus Tough Gaming RTX 3060 Ti. If you can find this at its current MSRP, it goes for about $630, which we might find at Best Buy or even on the New Egg Shuffle. Case we have here is a custom case from iBuyPower, but we match it with like something similar, which would be like a P400A from Fantex, and for the size purposes, and that retails for around 75 bucks. Now, if we went with our recommendation on the PSU, which we think is smarter, uh, getting you 750 watts, we'd be looking at about $105, which we would recommend the EVGA Supernova G5. Finally, the CPU cooler is a 240 millimeter cooler that came with it. So if we bought a good cooler as well, 240 millimeters, we'd go with the MSI 240R, which retails for around $100. So the total price of the build, if we built it ourselves, would come to around $1,600 or right at 1571 bucks. Okay, so $1,600 doesn't tell the complete story when you think about building this yourself. You may wanna also add some additional funding just to say, to be fair, for things like tools, uh, for things like shipping, et cetera, which may bring this build closer to 2K should you wanna build it yourself. And to be frank, let's be clear, finding a GPU is going to be the hardest part of all this as everything else is kind of regularly in stock at Newegg or Amazon. Now, onto this PC. Do you recommend this one, Roby? Well, given the price is $1,749, the GPU market the way it is and the way the system performs, this is kind of a no-brainer if this is something you wanna buy. There are only two things that I have issues with with this PC I mentioned. Number one, USB-C front IO port, and the motherboard actually having the USB-C front port and not being able to use it, kinda lame. Number two, the motherboard they used is rather cheap and it has no Wi-Fi 6. Other than that, I would see no reason given our testing and benchmarks why one wouldn't really want to pick up the system if you had your eye on it. Now this is of course caveat on the fact that this is an 11th gen versus a 12th gen and those are starting to release but the prices on those are going to be higher and again still a good price given what you have from a component standpoint and the performance. I mean you saw the numbers yourself but it's not about what I think it's about what you think. Were you surprised by our results? I mean, given how much Steve and others have pooped on these things, are you giving iBuyPower pre-builds a change given our numbers? Are you looking for a pre-built PC of your own? I would love to know all of those things down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video or go live right here on Robitech. If you have a question about this case or any other tech-related questions or PC pre-built questions, then check out our amazing Discord server filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts who love to share their thoughts and ideas on these very subjects. Looking for cheap tech? Then check out at robitechdeals.com or at robitechdeals on Twitter, where we have our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best details on all things tech, from PC components to TVs to video games, you name it. Finally, you can also follow me and my team on all the socials at Robitech pretty much everywhere. We hope you enjoy this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.